good evening. So again, if you came in late and you didn't hear in the announcements, uh, this is kind of a youth takeover service. So we decided, Pastor actually asked us to do uh, a youth group, what we do in here, which is nice because it means we get to be indoors because right now we have so many youth coming, we have to be outside and uh, it gets hot out there really quick. So it's kind of nice to be in air conditioned tonight. So thank you youth for doing this so willingly. Some of them are like, we're not going to be outside, but you can still go outside after we're done. So yeah, <laughs> yes, they say. So parents, let them hang out a little bit outside after we're done. So, all right. Uh, open your Bibles to John chapter 13. Uh, we're not going to go to a lot of scriptures tonight, but what we're going to talk about is something that um, is for all of us in here. So normally on Wednesday nights when I'm speaking with the youth, I talk to them about all kinds of different subjects. We, their favorite, like their absolute favorite is the dating series. They love it when we talk about dating and when we talk about the other things that come with dating. They love it. No, they really don't. <laughs> but they're shaking their heads like, no, not yet. But we talk about lots of things. We talk about that, but we make sure that we always talk about the Word of God and we implement the Word into anything that we're talking about. Um, we do get into more of the practical things. Um, when they get ready to go back to school, we like to make sure that they're built up and ready to go spiritually um, for school and what that's going to look like. But tonight, what I want to talk about is something that affects all of us each and every day. So before I get into that, I just have a question in here. And when I talk to the youth, I need participation because they fall asleep if they don't participate. So tonight, if I ask questions, feel free to like raise your hand and stuff like that or say yes. Um, there, there'll be yes or no questions. They're not going to be like recite something to me. Uh, but my first question tonight is how many people in here like superheroes? Any kind of superheroes, the movies, all that kind of stuff. Okay, one of my youth, someone tell me what your who your favorite superhero is. Abigail. Thor? Thor? Good choice. <laughs> Good choice. Iron Man. Iron Man? Okay. Anyone else? Any guys want to share? Any of the youth boys? Spider-Man? Cool. The old Spider-Man or the new Spider-Man? The old, see, yeah, right? You got it. There's, yeah. <laughs> So as you can see, lots of opinions about it. Okay, so now my next question is favorite superpower. Does anyone have a favorite? Invisibility. Invisibility. Okay. Anyone? Transportation. Transportation. Yep. Being being able to teleport. Teleport. That's what I meant. Flight. Flight. Fire. Very cool. <laughs> Doctor Strange. I don't know what Doctor Strange is. Yeah, I guess that's teleport, right? Being able to go from one place to another. See, they, they could tell you all about it. So, okay, so just a little bit of fact here. I, as much as the internet is factual, uh, I looked up just really quickly how much the Marvel movies, starting from the first Iron Man in like 2008 to the last, end, actually Homecoming, Spider-Man Homecoming, not Endgame, um, how much they made. And so just what I could see and like, I had to like write each movie down because I, I couldn't find a website that had it all listed. And then I had to subtract how much it cost to make the movies. They made, just from my quick calculations, $18 billion in just those. We're not talking about DC, which is, if you don't know what DC is, DC is the, sorry, DC is the ones that are like Batman and Superman and Wonder Woman. So funny story about this. Uh, a long time ago, we did a girls trip. I was younger, I was in middle school or high school, probably high school, and we did a girls trip and we went to Disneyland, but we also went to Universal Studios. Universal Studios at the time owned Marvel. If you guys know now, Disney owns Marvel, but back then it was Universal Studios who owned Marvel. And they had a Marvel restaurant where they had characters dressed up. So we go in there and Storm, who's from the X-Men, comes up to us, and then it was, was it? It was Spider-Man, no, it wasn't, yeah, it was Spider-Man who came up to us. Spider-Man came up to us, and my mom or someone asked where Batman was. <laughs> you, you, we didn't know back then that there's DC superheroes and Marvel superheroes, so we learned something that day. You, you don't cross the two. So anyways, getting back to superheroes, I have a point to this, I promise. Uh, this is me engaging the youth. Do you see it working? It's working. So if I need to switch mics, let me know, because I keep hearing it kind of rumble. It's good? Is it a low bass? All right. 
I'll try to hold still. Like I said, they don't make mics for women. So, um, so when it comes to superheroes, our world, not just the United States, our world, world right now is super into them, right? We see them in the movies. Disneyland right now is creating an Avengers headquarter. They're getting rid of all of their Pixar stuff, like Bugs Life and all of that, and they're moving in an Avengers headquarters. Uh, so they're gonna be making a lot of money on that. Not to mention the merchandise alone, how much money people are making off of superheroes right now. So superheroes are big. Um, and I thought this was interesting. I kind of went through and was like, what do people say some of the, the best superpowers are? And some of them are mentioned, flight, invisibility, um, healing powers, you know, that's a big one. That, that'd be like Wolverine, if you know who Wolverine is. Um, so you got that, and then you got like x-ray vision, and then you got, the one, the mind reading, right? A telepath who can read minds, all of those things. So uh, the number one, one that I saw though was the weather control, which I thought was interesting that that one was number one. But out of all of these that I just mentioned, there's someone in the Bible who did a lot of these things. And I'm not gonna go to every single passage where these things happen, but just so you know, nothing is new under the sun. And all the things that mankind comes up with, it comes from another place, right? This natural world was made from a supernatural world. That's why we desire the supernatural. That's why we desire these things. It's because what we see and feel right now is not as real as the supernatural world, the spirit world. And so if we look at the life of Jesus, he actually did many things that people are impressed by superheroes doing in today's modern world. So just some of the things that he did was he did heal people, right? Healing properties, like healing powers. That's a superhero, a superpower that we see. And that's something Jesus did. Controlling the weather. Do we see Jesus calming the storms? All right? how about this one? He perceived people's thoughts. Like he, he knew what they were thinking. That's superpower, right? Uh, and then this one, you may have missed this, but in Luke chapter four, verse 29 and 30, we're not gonna go there, but I don't know how he did it, but he either teleported or he became invisible because they brought Jesus up. I know you probably never saw this in scripture. They brought Jesus up to a cliff to throw him off of it. And the scripture says, and he passed through the crowd. And the next verse says he's like in another place doing other things. How did that happen? He obviously either became invisible, right, to them, or he just went through them. I don't know how. So Jesus displayed superpowers. So when we talk about things like that and we hear greater works are we supposed to do, right, than he did, that gets us excited. So what I want to talk about tonight is I want to talk about a superpower that we all have because this is the most important thing. The most important thing to know about Jesus' superpowers that he had, which was doing the impossible, is that he had a power source. It came from somewhere. And for us to do the things that Jesus did on this earth, we need to recognize the source. And the source is love. Love is the source of everything that we are called to do in this life. Those greater works that we're supposed to do, it's gonna come from love. And as we operate in the love of God, we too will be able to be superheroes to this world because that's what we're called to be. The world is desperately searching for people to fix their problems, right? Just imagine if we had superheroes like we see in the movies right now. We would be asking them to fix some problems right now, right, in the world. Well, do you know we are modern day superheroes? We have been given authority, we've been given power, we've been given the name of Jesus, and we have the ability, if love is our motive, to help people that are hurting. Because really and truly, that's what superheroes' jobs are, right? It's to help people in trouble. It's to help people who are hurting. To help people who are in danger. And we have that power and ability on the inside of us. So in John chapter 13, I told you to turn there. We are going to read out of the New Living Translation tonight. I like reading that one with the youth. Most of, uh, most of the scriptures, not every scripture is my favorite out of that translation, but tonight we'll read it, John 13, and we're gonna read verse 34 and 35 in the New Living Translation. They're gonna put it up on the screen. If you don't have the New Living, it says, so now I am giving you a new commandment, love each other, just as I have loved you, you should love each other. Next verse says, 
Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. So one of the biggest things about superheroes is there's always something that sets them apart. Do you know what sets us as Christians apart? It is our love for one another. Our love is what's going to show people the real Jesus. It's going to show them what he has done for them. It's going to show them how amazing he is and that he wants to help them in their times of trouble. So it's very important that we recognize that what he gave us, that love that's been shed abroad in our hearts, it is the force, it is the power that's going to help us help this world. Because that's why we're here. Why don't we just go to heaven after we get saved? Because we have a purpose beyond that. And our purpose is to love this world and show them Jesus by that love. Amen? So talking a little bit about Jesus and him being a superhero in his day and age, I just want to read to you guys just a few things so you get a better understanding of what the world was like when he came on the scene. Uh, it was a pretty dark world. It was like the Gotham of all Gothams at that time, if you know what that means, right? So Gotham is like a really bad town, right? Just bad, corrupt. Well, in Jesus' day, it was the known world at that time was ruled by the Roman Empire, okay? And there was a lot of not nice people in power during that time. So when Jesus was on the earth, Rome was the, the dominating force. Majority of people lived in extreme poverty at that time. There was no value on human life when Jesus was on the earth. We see different examples of that even in the Bible. In Matthew chapter 2, we see the babies being killed, right? Just, I mean, just imagine that, you know? We are actually seeing some of that right now, aren't we? No value of human life whatsoever. Uh, children were regularly abandoned in Jesus' day and the sick and elderly were left to die, which we see a lot of examples of that in scripture as well. Uh, the religions at that time were based off of stone idols. Um, people were very superstitious, believed in omens. A lot of the things they did was based off of superstition. Um, people would publicly do different things um, to appease their gods. So they were constantly living a life of, what can I do so nothing bad happens to me? You know, how do I need to appease this God or this God or this God just to make sure that I'm not gonna die tomorrow. Um, and then something that came on the scene when the um, Romans were in power was the gladiator sports. Now this is uh, very gruesome. When the gladiator sports began, within the first week, 5,000 people were killed. And you think about the population at that time. That's a lot of people. Um, it started out, the gladiator sport started out as a way to honor the dead, and it quickly became a sport of the most horrific nature. Slaves and prisoners were forced to fight to the death. The arena floor would be so covered in blood that they would have to stop the games because it was too slippery for people to continue. Uh, the crowds would become outraged if a body wasn't ripped apart, and so they started bringing in animals. And eventually, in the gladiator games and sports, Christians ended up becoming the main target at that time. So we see in Jesus' day, there was a lot of crazy stuff happening. A lot of things that we, we, you know, we think it's bad here, and it, it, there's not good things happening. But think about the world Jesus came in on, what was going on. Uh, the government at that time, different leaders um, would do different things. Uh, one of the leaders would throw babies into the sea to watch them drown. Uh, one leader would just pick strangers on the road at random to have them killed. Um, Nero would torch Christians um, for light at his garden parties. That's, that's the ruling force, right? What a crazy time to be alive in. And yet Jesus came during all of this stuff and turned to Matthew chapter 5, and he... He totally rocked their theology. He totally rocked their, uh, how they viewed life, how they viewed people, how they viewed all different things. He came in, and this is why he was a true superhero, was because when he came in, he started changing lots of things in the earth. And so in Matthew chapter five, we see Jesus talking, pretty much this entire chapter is him talking. And it starts with uh, the Beatitudes, which a lot of us would probably say we know or we've heard of it before, where he talks about, um, we'll just start, let's see, 
Start in verse 3, Matthew 5, 3. And again, in the New Living, I'm going to read it in a different translation. The New Living translation says, God blesses those who are poor and realize their need for him, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses those who mourn, for they will be comforted. God blesses those who are humble, for they will inherit the whole earth. God blesses those who hunger and thirst for justice or righteousness, is what the King James says, for they will be satisfied. God blesses those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. God blesses those who are pure in heart, for they will see God. Um, God blesses those who work for peace. And if you keep going through all of Matthew 5 into Matthew 6, Jesus is just rocking their world, their mindset. They've grown up with, you know, harsh rulers. They've grown up with basically, I'm out for myself. They've grown up with seeing kids abandoned, abandoning their parents when they get older, or when they're sick, things like that. And Jesus comes in here and he talks to them about, talks to them about anger, you'll see in this chapter. He talks to them about um, revenge. Here in verse 38 in chapter 5, it says, you have heard the law that says punishment must match the injury, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say, do not resist an evil person. If someone slaps you on the right cheek, offer the other cheek also. If you are sued in court and your shirt is taken from you, give your coat also. If a soldier demands that you carry his gear for a mile, carry it two miles. I mean, can you imagine when Jesus is saying this stuff and living in that kind of a world being like, what are you talking about? But see, he had something on the inside of him and that was love, the love of God, agape love. Not the love that's fleeting, not the love that's conditional. It was an unconditional love and because he shared this truth with them, people flocked to him. Thousands and thousands of people wanted to keep hearing this. This was radical teaching for that day and age. I mean, to say, if a soldier asks you to do this, a Roman who doesn't like Jews, because he's talking to the Jews in this, saying, and the Roman soldier says, carry my gear for a mile, go an extra mile for them. Can you imagine everyone's heads tilting and just being like, what on earth? But here's the thing, his words also had power behind him. So he was teaching them the love of God and at the same time showing them the love of God. When the children wanted to come, what did the disciples do? They said, oh no, because again, children weren't valued as much. The disciples said, oh no, don't bother him. And he said, no, let the children come to me. When he would let the sick come to him and he would heal them. The ones, the woman with the issue of blood, Right? She wasn't even allowed to be out in public. She could have been stoned for coming out and being in a crowd. And yet Jesus praised her for her faith, for doing that. See, the things that he spoke and the things that he did is what made him a true superhero in his day. And do you realize, you guys, we have the hurting, we have the sick, we have people all around us who need to see that kind of love, that sacrificial love. They need to see the power that we have as a church, the power that we have as Christians. They need to see us operating in it. They need to see it flowing out of us, and it is possible for that to happen. Romans 5, 5 says that the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts. That love is in us. It's, once you get saved, that love is on the inside of you. It is up to us to let it flow out of us. So let me just real quick tell you about the early church. So after Jesus has ascended into heaven, the early church um, were examples of this. They were true superheroes in their day. So there are many accounts um, of when plagues were happening and where plagues were rampant in the world, and where people were leaving villages because of those plagues or pandemics. What was the church doing? They were running into it. They were willing to go in and to help people who were in need. They weren't afraid. Right? The church was the first organization, if you can call it that, it wasn't really an organization back in the day, but they were the first ones to start orphanages to take care of the kids. Uh, they were taking care of the widows and the sick and the elderly. They were doing these things. And so as a result of the early church doing this, people started flooding to Christianity. We see in Acts chapter 2, in a handful of different passages where it says that people were added unto the church daily. We see thousands of people coming to the church after one sermon. But I'm telling you, it wasn't just the words they were speaking. It was the actions that followed. Jesus' ministry wasn't just about those words. After he spoke those words, he showed them the love of God. And the early church, it was the same thing. They weren't just preaching Jesus, they were showing Jesus. For us to be effective in this day and age, we have to 
not just say, I'm a Christian. We need to show that we're Christians. We need to be willing to do the uncomfortable things. We need to be willing to stand up for our beliefs, to stand up for morals. We need to be willing to help people that are hurting and are in need. Um, if people are sick, we need to not be afraid to lay hands on them and to pray for them. This is how people see Jesus. And so I want us, in closing, I want us to realize that we are the superheroes of our day. Why? Because Jesus is on the inside of us, because his love is in us. And it is our job to show that love to a hurting world. Don't tell me our world isn't hurting. It is hurting big time. There are so many hurts plaguing not just our nation, but our world. And it is time for us as Christians to rise up and say, we have the answer. You know, how many times in those movies do you see superheroes who, you know, struggle with that inner, like, do I really want to be a superhero or do I just want to live the normal life? But you know what? They all choose to be superheroes. None of them choose the normal life. And that's what we have. We can't choose normal. We can't choose to be the ones who just go to work, go to school, come and go, just, you know, binge watch whatever's on Netflix or all those things. Uh, no, we, we're set apart. We're on call 24 seven. Just like those superheroes, as soon as they hear the siren or as soon as something happens, what do they do? They crazy like can change in their costumes really fast. They've yet to explain how they're able to do that. But they are on call and they're ready to go and they're ready to go into danger. They're ready to go where they're not wanted, but they go in anyways and they help people. We are the church. We are supposed to, it's not gonna be comfortable all the time. We may have to sacrifice things you know, we may have to sacrifice certain relationships because of it. We may have to sacrifice certain get-togethers because of it. We may have to sacrifice, you know, different vacations or different things because of it. Why? Because we're superheroes. We're on call. People need us. You may have to take that phone call from someone that you really don't want to take that phone call from, but they need you at that time. They need someone to talk to. You know, you never know what that person is going through, but you got the Holy Ghost on the inside of you to give you the words. The cool thing is you're not a superhero just because you are who you are. You're a superhero because you've got Jesus on the inside of you. You got the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. You have the ability to know things before they happen, right? Why? Because the Holy Spirit will show you those things. You have the ability to be guided into what the truth is. All of these things, and we need to get more focused on the supernatural than the natural. Right now, it's really easy to be focused on natural things. I'm telling you, when you guys go back to school, when you guys go to work, you need to be more focused on the supernatural. Say, God, what do you have for me today? Who's hurting? Who's in need? You can perceive someone who is in need. You can perceive those things. So it's really important that we remember our purpose, why we're here, and that is to help others. And to remind ourselves, we've got a power on the inside of us that's greater than anything that's going on in this earth. We have the ability to pray for people and see them get well. We have the ability to speak to the mountains, to speak to the wind and the waves, right? We have the ability to do those things. I've done those things. Has anyone else ever spoke something into existence and it happened? We talk about it all the time, right? We do these things and we may just think it's just a little thing. No, that's, that's a supernatural thing. That is supernatural and the world is craving more supernatural right now. Don't tell me spending 18 billion on just one franchise of movies in our world. This world is obsessed with superpowers. They're obsessed with stuff outside of the norm. Well, guess what? We've got something on the inside of us that's outside the norm. So we need to respond to the call, right? Is it worth it? Absolutely. But it costs you time. It costs you money. It may cost you relationships. It may cost you some of your, you know, your freedoms of just wanting to do what I want to do. It may cost you some things. But at the end of the day, it's always worth it. So the next time you watch a superhero movie, just be like, hmm, that's me. That's me. I've got power on the inside of me. I have the ability to help someone in need. I have the ability to help someone who's in danger. And remind yourself, this is why we're here. It is the purpose of the church. And age doesn't matter when it comes to this. That's the cool thing about this. It doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter if you're a five-year-old or if you're a 95-year-old. We all have that power on the inside of us. And God can use each and every one of us. Amen? Let's co close in prayer. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity to, to come together tonight and to 
just to learn more about who we are in you, because that's truly what it is, Lord. We are new creatures in Christ. We have a new nature, and that new nature has been endowed with power, and we have the ability to help people. So, Father God, I pray as we go about our our day-to-day -day lives, Lord, even though nothing spectacular may seem to be happening, I just thank you, Lord, that you're leading us to helping those who need the supernatural in their life. Help us to, to love others like you've loved us. Help us to see hurts and to have compassion on people with those hurts, Lord. Help us to be the light of the world. Help us to be the salt, Lord, of this earth. Help us to help people. Help us to see the potential that we have on the inside of us because of you. Help us to see the power that resides on the inside of us. I thank you, Lord, that we are the church, the great church, your church. And with that comes great responsibility, but also with that, you've given us great power to overcome and to help people. And so we rely on your strength on the inside of us. We rely on the grace of God. We rely on the mercy of God. And every day we wake up, Lord, we are on call to do your service, to help people who are in need. We thank you for that, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. As I say to the youth, get it, got it good? All right. Pastor wanted to come up and say a few things in closing, so come on up. All right, this, this will only take a second here. Did I get that on or not? Am I on? Check one, two. This will only take a second, guys, but is there any superhero? Now, I know in the movie Aladdin, the genie said, I can do all these things, but I can't make somebody come back to life, and I can't make somebody love you, right? Um, but the superpowers that we're operating in include raising the dead. So we're even beyond some of these super. Is there any superpowers that raise the dead? I'm looking right here. I don't, I don't remember any superpowers that actually raise the dead. Now listen, guys, in the Old Testament, is there? Yeah, the best, best they could do, like Dr. Strange was able to somehow go back in time and, and fix everything. Yeah. But anyway, whether there is or whether there isn't, but there's also superhero power in the church. There's a scripture in the Bible that says in Hezekiah's day, time went backwards about 10 minutes. And it wasn't a clock, it was a sundial. So the actual solar system went into reverse. And there's another superpower in Joshua's day when Joshua and the, the battle was raging on the field. It was getting dark, but they needed more light in order to win the battle. So Joshua spoke to the sun and the moon and said, stand still. And the entire solar system stood still for a whole day. And it's written in the book of Jasher. The Bible says the details of this account where a man spoke and God hearkened to a man's voice and the solar system stopped for about a day. That's awesome. And people say, oh, you church, you faith people, you're going too far. We haven't gone near far enough. And all this starts with being born again and filled with the Spirit and speaking in tongues. And that's like the trigger to the rest of these gifts of the Spirit when it comes to knowing future events, supernaturally knowing things that you have no other way of knowing about the present or the past, uh, discerning of spirits, seeing into the realm of spirits. If there's a problem in that area, you can take care of it. And workings of miracles, gifts of healings, special faith. And that's really good, right? So I got stirred up. We are superheroes. The Lord made us superheroes. And the world, oh my goodness. The world is in so much trouble right now. And a pat on the back is not going to help them. They need supernatural, Holy Spirit-filled believers who don't care what they look like. They don't care what they sound like. They go to church because they want to. They walk in love because they want to. They tithe. They give offerings. And they operate in power. And they believe for miracles when they minister to people. And there's just no doubt in them at all. Jesus didn't lie. These things are going to happen. People need help, and here we are. Me and Jesus can fix anything in your life. And a lot of times, you just have to be confident like a superhero because, you know, nobody would have believed Jesus and would have got healed from Jesus if he didn't believe he was powerful. You know, he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. There's times we've got to just say, you know what? The Spirit of God is on me. I can help you. And that will build their faith. And when they come up and you minister to them, then it works a lot better because it's not just... Well, I hope you get better. You know they will. 
And if they get hooked up with that and you're led by the Spirit, you'll see results 100% of the time. Good word. All of you tonight. Great, great. All the way from the beginning to the end. It's just so good tonight. I'm, I'm jazzed to be a part of this church. we got some awesome young people. And the Bible says in the last days, you guys are going to be used greatly. And don't think you have to be perfect to be used of God. Just put your heart in His hands and walk with Him every day of your life. There's no perfect people in the Bible that were used by God. There was just trusting people, believing people that were used of God. So, you're awesome. I determined not to let silence make me nervous anymore. I actually look for situations like that now. If you're talking to somebody, just quiet for 30 seconds. <laughs> Amen. Well, we love you guys. That's all I wanted to say. I thought it was an excellent night tonight. We'll never be the same. See you later.